What am I doing here? <laughs> right, guys, my name is Dereli. I didn't really look for me. I didn't hear me. I can be is Oriki. Rajiv Raja, Indian name. Don't call me that. If you call me that, I'll finger your eye on the streets. Okay, so I would like to say that I'm an angel, I'm a devil, and sometimes in between, I'm as bad as I can get, I'm as good as I can be. Sometimes I'm a million colors, sometimes I'm black and white, I am all extreme. Try to figure me out, you never can. Okay, globe trotter, jet setter, high roller, eh? fashion killer, jaw dropper, fire starter, ninja killer. Okay, let me know. Stop all of this uh -huh. quickly. Now uh, I'm the first and only son. I have two younger sisters, and I'm kind of nationality confused because my dad is Nigerian, Papa Yoruba man, Ogun State, Abel Kuta Alake. Yes, and then my mom's dad is Indian, and her mom is from Mauritius. You know that very exotic island. And I was born in Hamburg, Germany. So I'm into your loan. The Banyan side case of me. Where, where exactly am I from? But I have a green passport, so let's just put it as being totally Nigerian. Um, I was born June 13th, 1983, and. Um, I like to think that I started out, what, what am I saying I like to think? I know that I started out pretty early in the industry, but anyway, we'll get away from that. Growing up, first five years I spent in Hamburg, Germany, got to Nigeria, couldn't speak a word of English, finally settled in well. My dad moved to Agbara Estate. Yes, imagine from the airport, we landed in Nigeria, in Lagos. My father carried us to Agbara Estate, long, long, after I Janiki. Kilawadebe. But you know, um, at that point, my dad was doing really well. I mean, he invested in a bakery, so money was flowing in well. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I was born with a silver spoon, but I think over time, I've worked really hard to create one. Yes, create the silver spoon in my heart. You know, and then before we knew it, um, primary school, you know, I got double promotion twice. I like to think that's it. They used to call me Yeah, you know, and I could read anything I could lay my hands on. I think a lot of us kids need to cultivate that reading culture. To all parents out there, ensure that your kids read the right literature. It is very essential. And to all the pregnant mothers out there, this works. As you are holding the tummy, be reading the book to the baby. Hmm. Yes, it's come. It will work. Because my mother used to do it for me, and then I'm just crazy about books all the way. So, by the time I got out of primary school, my dad's bakery went downhill and he practically lost everything. You know the reversal of fortunes? And we had to move out of our very beautiful architectural masterpiece into an uncompleted building. I'm not kidding. A house that had no windows and no doors. And every time it rained, it rain was always pouring in. And the only thing we could eat back then, I remember, was I used to scale the fence to the next compound and or put their cassava. And they would cut, you know, and then we boil it back to back. I'm not kidding. And that was even when I was in primary six. So of course, you know, I had to get into secondary school. I got admission into St. Gregory's. I had to move into my uncle's house where I became their house boy, their cleaner, their errand boy, their butler. Whew. And they had this son that used to test out all the punishments from command that they used to use to beat him. He would come and practice this on me. So don't necessarily think that um, my life has always been rosy. Nah, 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 nah. I'm just beginning to enjoy the fruit of my labor somehow, somewhat, because I toiled and suffered, you know. And then I think at that point, when I was in SS1, that was in 1995, that was when I started out on Kibishon 101 on NT. If you all remember that show, it is time for Kibishon 101. By then, my uncle had thrown me out of the house. Not my uncle, my uncle was very nice to me. But my aunt and her kids, I mean, they said I did something that I never did. I think it's just now that we unravel the truth about what happened then and they realized it wasn't me. But you know, it's family, it's family. Family is the best gift anyone can have. I've forgot, for, you know, forgotten and forgiven and moved on. So, Got on Kidvision 101 from 95 through till 98. Took up a teaching job before I got into the university. Got into the university, got involved in theatre, got involved in modelling. I used to dance for a lot of artists. Got on Sound City and here I am today sitting in front of you. Ha! TVC Studios at TVC Connect and you're interviewing me right now. If you say I don't do much for myself back then, I'll not be sitting here. I'll be not so. Because now I am interesting subject matter. Ha! Oyana. I like to think that my style is um, eclectic, it's vivacious, it's an extension of my personality because you know I'm bubbly, I'm all over the place. As people always ask me, where do you get all that energy from? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I can't drive, I don't know how to swim, and I don't even know how to cook. I can't remember the last time I cooked. And then there's something I can't do, I started putting down on a recent. But you know, like basically I just, you know, I'm full of life. I am very positive, I'm a very positive minded person. No matter the insults you throw at me, no matter the negativity you bring my way, I always find the positivity in it. <laughs> You know, I like to just laugh, you know, and just look at the funny side of life. And I don't take myself seriously. 
you know, I actually make a lot of fun of myself, out of myself as well. So my clothes reflect my individuality. And you know what they say, everyone can buy fashion, but style you have to own. Fashion is in the clothes, style is in the wearer. Fashion, you know, unites us, but style separates us. So I like to think that I'm not so stylish or fashionable, I just like to wear what I want to wear. I wake up in the morning, I carry if it's rag or if it's sack, I wear it. If you don't like it, go and jump over third me and bridge. As long as I look in the mirror and I like what I see. Ha, <laughs> baby, the world can rest. But I think over time, because this is um, an, an identity that I have carved for myself, and it's not about trying to arrest attention or trying to make headlines or trying to be different from the guy next door. Because I did not have too many options growing up. I had two shirts and three jeans. Every day, we are, we are, we are, people in church, they even ask me, oh, lash on me. And then, of course, now, then, you know, like I said, my dad was out of a job. My mom was trying so hard to make ends meet. I started to rip, shred, tear, zip, patch, hook and flip my clothes so it looked like I had different clothes of course I just had a few but now you know as they be now we have countless countless clothes now but I really wouldn't rub that in anybody's face truth what I would just say is that over time um, I follow this saying and I want to share it with you so a thought you rip an act so an act you rip a talent so a talent you rip a character so a character you rip an identity so an identity you rip a brand and I think that's what I'm doing with myself right now Dereni is mad M-A-D making a difference Sound City people to today be again. Ah, they can follow Sound City. Um, it was a bitter experience for me. I am not going to lie. Let me be as sincere as can be. Sound City was a brand that I practically slept for. I was living for Sound City. I was eating Sound City every day. I was drinking Sound City. Sound City, my name was synonymous with Sound City. When I started out at Sound City, I was the only presenter that didn't have a program. And I was the least earner. I know that some other presenters were earning from 100k upwards. I was earning 45k. Then they now increased it to 65k. And then they used to tell me, we don't know what you're doing here. You're on probation, you're not delivering. And I said to myself, you know what? I am going to walk my tiny behind off till my name is synonymous with this brand. And it didn't take me more than, it just took me a year. I was living in the office. I walked my neck off. And not only was I presenting and producing, I was marketing, I was doing PR, I would walk into brands and force them to come and invest in Sound City. So overall, I think the experience was, was I mean, it's second to none. It was a monumental phase in my life. But I think maybe they sat down one day and said, eh, maybe Dereli is growing bigger than our brand, he's getting too much exposure, he's overexposed, so we better chuck him out and get somebody else. At that point in time, I had introduced Adams Ibrahim, who's one of their fabulous VJs to Sound City because I was working on Sound City, I was working on Spice TV, I was working at On TV and I was working also on Village Square. It was, it was crazy, it was draining but I just needed someone to take some weight off my shoulders. So I introduced Adams and he started working with Spice TV and before I knew it, the police was involved, there was a bit of an arrest, like a report was, you know, thrown at me, a petition was written against me. I had to go to a police station in my area, in my family house area, which was in Panty, because, you know, I grew up in Yaba. And when I saw the petition, it was, it was, oh, it was preposterous. I was like, ah, Amy, if someone who's worked with a brand from 2005 to 2010, into 11 and this is how you I mean it's easy if you invite me to the office and strip me of everything that you've given me and let me go as opposed to making it a public spectacle but you know how it is now I grew up in an area where I used to be a teacher and all the police men and women I used to teach their children so when I got to the station I was even received like <laughs> like Barack Obama and then when they read the petition the three things we say, what nonsense is this I dare go home you know but they said then I had an official car which I paid for from my salary, they said they wanted the car back. I said, well, there are better ways to get this car other than making it a police affair now. Ah, ah. So I said to myself, well, I think my job with Sound City is done. It's a pity it had to end this way because Sound City, I regarded as family, sincerely, truthfully, honestly, authentically, this is the truth. I saw Sound City as family because I was living in the office. And again, I am proud of the fact that none of the other VJs I was working with were jealous of me or envious of my position because they knew how I started. I was the one who they would be selling on errands to go and buy food for everyone. If you get what I mean, I was the one writing scripts for everybody. So when I rose to making a, the brand synonymous with my name, everyone was with me all the way. And it got to a point where people would call Sound City and say, if there really is not available, we are not investing in this brand. And if I'm in any part of anywhere, even countries that are not on the world map, they will bring me down to get the job. So it felt very fulfilling. It felt good. I felt appreciated, acknowledged, recognized and celebrated that my work was, you know. But then, I was back to square one. So when I got out of Sound City, I was being old. I really don't want to go into all those details, but 
I was back to ground zero. I had nothing to my name. I had no money in my account. My sisters were in private schools. I was at a loss. Like, I didn't even know where to start from. But Tsunami did front Nana, as you can see. The upgrading, the revolving, the rebranding, and the blessings that have come. So I think I'm grateful to God that that happened. Because if it didn't, I, I think I would be stuck there, or I would have been sat like all the other old videos. And then I'd be like, oh, what do I do with myself? But how my channel, Old Geek, came was a tremendous blessing. And the perks, the incentives, the advantages of working for an international brand. What? Should I start with the first class streets? That's first class, so not even business, first class. And the five star hotels. Hmm. When I was working at Sound City, Mm -hmm. Another story for another day. But you know what? I think that um, there are a lot of self-help books. But me, I have a PhD in IBTIA. That's an acronym. IBTIA. And it says, I've been through it all. My people, I have been through everything. And I can sit here right now and tell you that you can get through any misfortune you find yourself. Just turn it into a blessing. Find the positivity in it. And you know what? <laughs> You'll rise above it. That bear. But be a fountain and not a drain. Those who I am talking to, they know themselves. Hey, oh no, no. Let, let, me, let me share this because I haven't said this anywhere. But I got an email from a certain non governmental organization in the States and they said, Oh, well, we've checked out your profile. We think you're a very influential icon in your country, in Africa, that's on the African continent, and would like to sponsor your transgender phase for free, but we'll have to film the entire process and make it into a reality show. Trust me, the exposure will be brilliant. But I shall not say, I know go fit carry my wish to come back to Niger with that. But even if I come, they don't recognize me now. Ha, I'll be sexy gone. But I'm, I mean, it started off as a joke. And if I'd always wanted to, you know, transgender myself, or if I wanted to cross that, you know, that phase and, you know, transit into a woman, I think it's something that I've done since. I would have, because when I want to do something, I do it because I want to do it. But when Bruce Jenner transitioned into Caitlyn Jenner, you know, the internet, internet went agog, social media was on fire. And then I noticed my name was training for what? You know, and I just kept seeing stuff like, oh, Caitlyn Jenner has opened doors for Charlie Boy and they really. But then Charlie Boy didn't even pass it. It was me. They passed me, passed me. And then a particular tweet caught my eye. I liked it. It said, um, Derele is Nigeria's Caitlyn Jenner with no transgender money. I said, ha. When did I open my mouth to say I want to be transgender that you think I don't have the money to do it? I would not actually pack my hard earned money and say I want to go and give myself. And Bobby and then people ha, Chine came in. What happened? You know, and then I just, the reason why I now took some pictures that I took, I was just making fun out of the whole situation. And I said, well, if you check it out, well, you guys have labeled me as, you know, Ni and there really is um, 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 Nigeria's trans um, transgender with no transgender money. And I put it this way there really is Nigeria's Caitlyn Jenner with no need for transgender surgery. But that's at that, I think no one saw the. You know, comic relief in it, and then yeah, they just he's going to do it though. Oh no, no, useless child. Where his parents? They should kill him. If I was his father or his mother, I would sacrifice him to Amadi or her. I would. Let me see the yes sooner, Abby. So um, it's something definitely that has crossed my mind because a lot of people have put it in my head. I've had people that even want to pay me for this sort of things. But is it something I want to do? Who knows? Tomorrow I might wake up and decide to do it. It's my body. It's my frame. Now me get myself. If I go and babe, I will come back to Nigeria. I said, nobody knew it is me. Ah. And then I'll now snap a show with correct people and say, ha! Okay. Truth, I know it wasn't only true. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for it. I see lots of work. Ah! It is work. Let me just be wearing the things I'm wearing. <laughs> it's okay like that. Of course. Ah, I love children. I want kids. I live for children. Because you know, there's a little kid inside every one of us, and me, there's a little kid in me wanting to bust out. I love kids. I'm always goofy around children. I can carry them for, you know, like, and I know how to communicate. I understand, you know, the children lingua. I know how to talk to kids really well. And it will shock you that 90% of children that I meet gravitate towards me. It's crazy. You know, the ones who would cry will cry because maybe the hair or the clothes, but then they will still, you know, like I said, now I have my way with kids. And I'm very appreciative of the fact that I wouldn't call it a fan base, but my target crowd, people that I appeal to, cut across, you know, from kids, from infants to kids, to teenagers, to adolescents, to even elderly people, say, you don't think we are done the market. So definitely I'm going to get married, of course. 
hopefully this year, next year, maybe I don't give a definite date, but just know you will all be invited. And who I am getting married to, nobody will know until that day, which is why I want everybody to come. Come and feed your eyes. Will I be wearing a dress? Will I be wearing a suit? Come and find out. <laughs> Come and see where the wonder was she. Hey, Daddy, can I go? Um, I am going to be a hypocrite if I say that I will stop my kids from doing what they want to do because coming from an ex coming from a family background as mine, you know that my father is a Yoruba man. So we've lived with family members, cousins, extended family members, and they went on and on and on and on about my breaking out phase if I can put it that way because they don't understand this excommunicated me out of church I remember I couldn't even walk on the street people would stone me people would abuse me conductors would throw me out of buses in school then I was in uni like my lecturers used to walk me out of class every day shade us on the outside world back home huh. I will have aunties uncles travel from all parts of the world and come and talk to your love and they'll call my father Alaba oh be weary by your more in your weary that is to say that your children, that is me because they call me children, not child. Your children is running mad. You know, but truthfully, I mean, let's look at it right now. I cannot find one person who used to label me all sorts. Come and say that to my face right now. If you see how they rally around me and kiss my behind. I'm not trying to rub it in their faces, but you know, that, that's the irony of life. And then when I go to the church that they excommunicated me from, you will think that eh, it's Beyonce and Jay-Z that just arrived. Oh, mommy. I used to, like to look at them. I'm on you. But that's by the way, anyway. So, um, truth be told, my dad, on the other hand, because you know, my mom is a foreigner, so we can leave my mom out of the equation. She's exposed to so many cultures. I mean, she's like, she's like a multilingual, so she's, we take her out. At the point, she was like, they really will get tired of it. But my dad, on the other hand, was very, 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 totally understanding. He was like, I felt like he was in my shoes and he could totally relate with what I wanted to do with myself. And maybe he had a vision of God appeared to him and said, be the boy, you, hmm, you, you know, make something out of it. So I, he just allowed me. I mean, he would go to the market, he would even buy me safety pins. I think, you know, you guys have interviewed him separately, so he said these sort of things. And right now, let's just say he's reaping the fruit of the, of the something that's invested in. You know, he's making returns from his investments. If you understand what I mean. So now I will be a hypocrite to say that I will not let my children, you know, express their individuality. If anyone wants to do it, I will even show them the way. And tell them how to be a money-making madness machine. Ha! MMMM! Babe! Just like I've done with myself and I'm still doing. Hmm. It's not a smart thing, no. So crazy they easy now the trekking they have. I think I will be as sincere as I can. I've always wanted to have one of those very, you know, just get the ways that you go to Vegas and then you just get married, spot the moment, you know, something wild and out, very uncalled, not so planned. Because, you know, when you're planning a wedding, it's like an event. It's like, it's like a carnival. You're going to deal with, you know, wedding planners, you're going to deal with family, you're going to deal with Asho AP. I mean, it's a Nigerian culture and I totally, truthfully appreciate it, especially from the Yoruba side. Omo Yoruba, Tebije, you understand? So I'll do the Yoruba way. We'll do proper introduction, we'll engage me, we'll do everything, babe, bam. Uh, and then I'm not going to do a white wedding where I'll say I want to travel. Come on, because I mean, what's the point of traveling and then getting to carry everyone on? You know, there'll be issues. And so let's have it here. You know, let's do something. And then if I decide to want to travel and go and do something somewhere, that's my business, that's my pocket. But I want a wedding that's like a carnival. I don't like all that VIP stuff because I'm not a VIP, VIP person. You know, I'm just a regular boy doing what he loves to do. And I'm not really into all that, you know, paparazzi, paparazzi, nah. I will have a wedding that everyone will be invited. Of course, we have a site for all our people, our showbiz personalities. You understand? A site for the media. And then everybody, because my, my um, job specification, you know, cuts across. So I can't say I am in a certain field or, you know, I have to be as generic as I can. So we invite everybody. Ah, everybody come and have fun. Come and celebrate with me now. Hey, come and chop rice. Come and, ah, shot me in So everybody, mm. and me, I am a guru. Iboro to the Kami local champion, so we'll do Iboro wedding. If you if you if you are scared of attending them, we'll be watching it live on TVC. TVC Connect, just be watching it and you see what is transpiring and who I am getting married to. Oh, a whole lot. 2016 has been, you know, the calls have been coming in despite the fact that you know we've got a couple of, you know, um challenges going on right now. You know how the you know the 
the current situation of Niger, our beautiful change that we have come to love and adapt and try and adjust to. But overall, I'll say, you know, things got to a standstill at a point in time. You know, you know, I, know, I totally understand, but we always have things to fall back on. But now, you know, calls are pouring in, which is good. Definitely more TV. I have new stuff that I'm working on. I'm grateful to God for that. And of course, I've been saying this and I must finish it before the end of this year. My book, I'm writing a beautiful book that will chronicle my life, basically. And you know, when I mean chronicle my life, from, you know, from conception, not to completion, I never come out here to, but to this certain level, and I want a lot of people to, especially adolescents, you know, to go through that process of self-realization, self-actualization, you know, and self-independence at a young age. Because I learned that pretty early. And I think that is what has helped shape the individual that I am right now. Take away the clothes, take away the feathers, take away the hair, take away the, you know, underneath all of this is a, you know, a well-strategic mind, if you understand what I mean. And I, of course, I know what I am doing myself, you know. So I want a lot of people to, you know, learn from that. Not necessarily emulate this lifestyle. Me when I leave this monopoly for me. When I don't shop inside my market, when I go find my own when I do my own me, me, I do my own badge of the evil forest like this, Halloween costume, all of them. Yeah. So definitely putting that book together would have an amazing launch for it. And if possible, you know, try and incorporate it into the school curriculum. I know that sounds far fetched, but when you see what I'm writing, <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from. Final words, oh, no, no, sorry. Okay, so to everyone watching me right now, to people who, you know, people on social media to start with, I will call them family, my, you know, family, my database family, my online media family, social media family, tweets, Instagram, high five to go, Bado, my space, Foursquare, Tumblr, Swam, they plenty of so all of them, I the hey, Luna. The ones where they curse me, I the great Luna. The ones where they bless me, I the great Luna. The ones where they understand me, mm -hmm. you will understand me with time. The ones where they understand me, but still they try to understand what I they do. With time, you will reach them. And um, I'm very appreciative of people who stop me on the streets, who call me, who talk to me. And I think, you know, when you judge someone, when you judge an outward appearance, I think when you get to meet, people tell me, oh my God, I didn't know you were this. I mean, I'm a robot boy, I'm, ah. How do we call my Jile? So I know how to always show respect, not because I have to show it, because I want people to like me now. Nah, it's because I am naturally that way. I'm very grounded. Yeah, so thank you to everyone. And to everyone in the industry, I'll say this anytime. Stay grounded. Never forget a name. Never forget a face. If you're in this industry, because that really helps. Don't, ah, don't forget people, though. Don't forget where you started from. Be good to people on your way up, so that they'll be nice to you on your way down. Choose a job that you love. You never have to work a day for the rest of your life. As you can see, they're paying me to live my life, to be wearing feather, I could come and be flying all over the place. And always be a first-class version of yourself and not a second-class version of anybody else. Listen to learn, but above all, learn to listen. We all want to express ourselves. Listen for once. And then, oh, the final, oh my goodness, it was in my head just now. Ha! Remember to be grateful every time you get up in the morning. Remember to show gratitude. Thank you, sorry, please, excuse me. Those words, trust me. Ah, they go a long way. My people, you know, go pinch you now. So talk am now. If you understand what I mean. Uh -huh. So now, at this point in time, they say it is time to kick me out of TVC studio. Ha! Love you guys. Twile everybody. Akinyo, Adobale, Akunleo. Eshew, Eshew. Thank you for helping our career. Ha! Yeah, so my name is Dewey. Some people call me Wirele. They say it's Dewey. I look like a horror movie and I celebrate Halloween every day. When I was normal, I did not have money. But now we craze don't enter. Money the enter. So my people pray to the God of madness to locate your craze and turn it into a money-making madness machine. <laughs> Dewey, let alone sorry, my people. And of course, I am hanging out with eh, the one that puts a full stop at the top spot. They were born without a stop button. And guess what? <laughs> when it comes to TV, there is only one name. Give it up for TBC Connect Meets. They met me on this seat in their office. They don't even want me to go and they will keep meeting me. And I hope they come to your house and meet you. Or they bring you and meet you. Eh? TBC connect me. So Yana, let's go there. Take it outside. Take it inside. Yeah. Thank you, sir.